my friend, welcome back to the Emily the Mystic YouTube channel. I'm forever grateful that you are here. My name is Emily. I'm your host for this video. If you are new to my world, I am an Akashic Records master consultant and teacher. I'm a psychic development coach. I am a spiritual mentor for entrepreneurs. And today we're talking about intuition and some really surprising blocks to intuition. I have been doing a lot of personal work recently and in doing some personal work have really come to greater clarity about my own intuition. Being a channel, I'm always looking for ways to really maximize my intuitive gifts for myself and my own life. It's always harder to read for yourself than it is to read for other people. And so I've been doing some healing for myself around really opening up my own intuition. And so I'm excited to share some of these surprising intuition blocks today because I know that they will help you come to greater clarity around your own intuitive gifts and where you may feel like your intuition isn't coming in as crystal clear as you would like it to. Maybe you've been wanting to cultivate a deeper connection to your spirit guides and you feel like you can't connect with them or perhaps You are at a crossroads in your life and you need to make a major decision and you just don't know what to do next and you've been sitting with this decision for a while and you are wanting your intuition to really help guide you. Like, what do you do and why are you feeling like you don't know the answers? So this video is going to give you some clarity around that and I hope will help spur some deeper digging into your own personal journey and what may be creating some resistance for you around letting your intuition come through. So I can't wait to get into it. I've got my microphone in front of me today to hopefully improve the audio quality for these videos. So sit back, relax, enjoy, and make sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. As always, like this video. And as you, as things resonate with you from this video, make sure you comment below to let me know what made sense for you. So this first one, this first really surprising intuition block is something that I have really come to a greater awareness of in my own life, and I see it so deeply within my clients. So I work with very, very empathic people. My clients feel things deeply. They're highly sensitive. They are very connected to the people in their life. They're very connected to the world around them. They're very connected to the collective. And because they feel things so deeply, they are often, and myself too, included in this and likely for you too, they are so deeply connected to what everybody else is feeling and sensing. And that can create a massive block to your intuition because if you're walking around with this open aura, this open energy field that's like a sponge, constantly absorbing the feelings, emotions, and energy of other people in your life, it's going to be really hard for your own intuition and your own connection to source to be crystal clear because you've got all of these imprints, energetic imprints from other people in your auric field. So let me back up for a second and kind of explain sort of the energetic mechanics of how this works because my spirit guides were showing me a very clear visual of this the other night, and I thought it really made a lot of sense, and I hope it will make sense for you, that whenever we have an energetic connection with somebody else in our life, maybe it's a the people in our household, a friend that we've had a phone call with, perhaps a client that we've worked with, maybe our boss at work or our coworkers, whoever it is that we're interacting with, anybody that we interact with, not only do we create an energy cord, we talk about cords a lot in the spiritual community, right? We talk about how we have we create cords to all of the people that we interact with. Not only do we have cords to those people, but that simple interaction can leave an energetic imprint in our field, like a stamp. I want you to imagine that the person that you have just had your last phone call with, the person you've just been on the phone with last in your life, that they have literally left a stamp, a mark, an energetic mark <laughs> of themselves on your auric field. And if that is the case, if you've got a stamp of your friend's energy on your field 
and you are trying to go throughout the rest of your day focusing on you, you likely are still picking up and sensing the energies of your friend around you. (laughs) And that can be a massive block to your intuition, especially if you tend to have very codependent relationships with the people in your life. Parents, maybe your spouse, your partner, your romantic interest or partner, your children, maybe, maybe your friends, who knows? Codependency is a psychological dynamic and a relationship dynamic where we carry the energy of other people and we take responsibility for other people and we take responsibility for their feelings and their emotions and we try to really help other people to a fault. That's just a very, very, very basic explanation to help that term make more sense with what I'm talking about for this video. Codependency is a whole a whole realm of information um, to talk about, and that is for a separate video. But for the purpose of this, uh, for the purpose of this video, if you have a lot of codependent dynamics and relationships in your life, if you're enmeshed, meaning you are very closely, intimately connected with a lot of people in your life, that can really create a challenge when it comes to your intuition because, again, you're walking around with these energetic stamps from the people around you. And so if your energy is so mixed up with everybody else, how can you possibly have clarity around what to do next and what to do for yourself? Especially if you are very heavily being influenced by the beliefs, by the opinions, by the desires of your family members or your friends in your life. For example, let's say you have parents who have always wanted you to go to medical school to become a doctor, but you're such an empathic person and you know that your gift is art and maybe healing people. Maybe you're here to do art and do Reiki healing. Your beliefs from your parents around how you should live your life and how you should make money are greatly going to, of course, be impacting your intuition, especially if you're interacting with your parents a lot and you're not clearing your energy field. So that can create some funkiness in your third eye and some lack of clarity and some fogginess around receiving intuitive insights because you're so caught up in everybody else's beliefs and everybody else's stuff. So I share this with you to make you more aware of it Because the more that you're aware that you're picking up on everybody else's emotions already, we need to peel back those layers and we need to clear your auric field so that you can become a clearer channel. It's not that you're not intuitive enough, right? It's not that your intuitive gifts aren't strong enough yet. It's more so that your auric field is clogged up with all this gunk from other people (laughs) and from other things going on in your life that... It's making you hard for you to be, it's making it hard for you to be that clear channel because of these energies that are screaming at you to do this or do that or follow this path or follow that path or make this decision or choose this person or not. So how can we clear our auric field? A couple of different ways that we can do this. First of all, you are going to want to cut cords with everybody throughout the course of the day. I will, after I have a session with clients, I will visualize that my spirit guides are helping me pull out those cords from the client, like pulling out a plug. If I'm having a conversation with somebody in my life, especially one that's emotionally charged, I always make sure we pull the cord out. And I do my best to remember to do this last thing at night before I go to sleep so that I'm not sleeping plugged in. I also, since my guides have shown me this visual of the imprints, I also imagine at night before I go to bed, visualize that there is a vacuum cleaner in front of me that has the ability to pull these imprints off my field, like we're pulling off a snake skin or we are pulling off those those energetic holographic stamps from your auric field. We're pulling them away. And that helps me feel so much better and so much clearer and in my own energy. I guarantee you, that if you somehow were able to 
book a cabin in the woods for yourself for a whole weekend, you didn't use your phone, you didn't go on social media, you didn't talk to anyone, and you were by yourself, you would learn the feeling of being in your own natural energy. And for many of you, that would also maybe that would bring up a lot of complicated feelings and emotions that you've been avoiding, but that's a different conversation for another time. But if you would have the luxury of being able to do that, your intuition, I guarantee, would come through very clearly <laughs> because you are alone and in your natural energy. But that's not the world, the way the world works. And we are here to be in relationship and build relationships so we can't avoid other people. As much as I know, some of us would like to live in a, a cabin in the woods <laughs> and live our most witchy life from there, right? Uh, but we do do need to learn proper energy clearing protocols so that we're not sitting in other people's stuff all day long. So make sure you're doing those two things and also make sure that you're calling in protection first thing in the morning. I have a video about energetic protection on my channel that you can definitely check out and that will also help you to feel a lot better. So that's the first very surprising intuition block. The second one um, may freak you out a little bit And I have to share it with you because it's really important and something that is not spoken about a lot in the spiritual community, which is that, unfortunately, we can, if our auric field, again, is very open, because we're very empathic, we're very intuitive, we can attract very low vibrational, low level parasitic entities that can leach from our energy field. I will be very bold to say that I, in my personal belief and in my work that I've done with clients, I will say that the majority of the human population, especially people who are in a very low vibrational state, have some sort of parasitic entity attachment. Now, that's not going to be everybody, and if you've been doing your spiritual work, if you're here watching this channel, and if you're like really, you're feeling good, you're really in a clear energy, you don't, you know, your mental health is in a good place, it's very unlikely that you have any sort of attachments, but for a lot of people who are in a low vibrational place, they may have attachments, and if you are feeling so distracted in your life from doing the things that you claim that you want for for yourself, if you're feeling extremely distracted, maybe you have a set goal for yourself and you have been working towards this goal for months and you just can't seem to get there and you've been distracted by 20 million other things, like getting led on all these different side quests and side paths, Um, it may be because there's a being in your field that's trying to distract you from reaching your goal. Now, of course, there are other reasons why we can be distracted. We, of course, can create resistance towards reaching our goals for many different reasons. Um, So if you are procrastinating on working towards something or working towards a goal, this could be a reason why that's happening. Just something for you to think about. It's more so a feeling of being completely being so distracted and foggy and unclear about what to do next. Like you just can't seem to figure it out. And entities will often put you in a very low emotional place. You may, if you have a history of mental health diagnosis, including depression or anxiety, they can latch on to that and can amplify those feelings and those symptoms. So if you are going through your life and you are at a place in your life where you want clarity around your next steps, but you can't seem to get there, you can't get out of bed, you feel so weighed down, you feel so heavy, you feel you're having these in, in, intense mood swings, you're very emotional, uh, you can't seem to get catch a break, and you've been doing the spiritual work, but you can't, you can't figure out what's wrong with you. And there's nothing wrong with you, by the way. And it's likely not your fault. It's not your fault. (laughs) And it's likely in a being that is latching on to and feeding off of those lower vibrational feelings. And feeling sad or having heavier emotions is not a bad thing. 
But if you've been in that place for a while and you can't get out of it, you have been in that fog for weeks. Maybe for you it's days and that's very unlike you. It's likely some attachment. For me, I have dealt with entity attachment. I have a whole video of that on my channel. And I routinely, because I work with clients and I am opening up my auric field so much, I have to clear my energy and prevent these things from attaching because when they do attach, I am immediately not myself. Within a day or a couple of days, I am sad. I am in a low place. I don't want to get out of bed. I am like moping around the house. I don't want to do anything. I don't want to get anything done. And that's so unlike me. I am normally, I'm this manifesting generator. I'm a bubble of energy. I love creating and you guys get it. But when I'm in that lower vibrational place, I know immediately that something's wrong. And I have that level of self-awareness now because I've been doing this work for a while. So I can immediately go figure out who the entity is and clear it. But if you're not quite there yet, again, most of us aren't doing spiritual work for a living, right? If you're not quite there yet, um, I hope this video helps show you that the way you've been feeling may not be your fault. I mean, it's not, may not be, it is not your fault. And it's likely coming from some sort of attachment. Entities can really fuck with us. They can really mess with us. They can really create a lot of disturbance and distraction in the auric field, chaotic situations, challenge, etc. So that can really block our intuition. And unfortunately, especially if you are just learning to use your psychic and intuitive gifts and you haven't been properly trained by a practitioner that teaches about entities, which I do in my mentorship, the Intuition Activation Academy, if you are not taught properly how to connect with high vibrational beings, you may be connecting with imposter spirit guides that don't have your best interests at heart. And I don't say that to scare you, but to help you increase your discernment to make sure that you are not following blindly the messages of a guide that has just showed up out of nowhere and is claiming to like be your end-all be-all spirit guide who, and they only know best and they come in with sort of this like ego and they lead you down a, the wrong path. I had a client several years ago who believed that her main spirit guide was Jesus, which that can be the case for a lot of us. A lot of us work with Ascended Master Jesus. And this client believed that her spirit guide, Jesus, wanted her to do some very dark things in her house alone. And that's obviously not Jesus, right? Jesus, as an ascended master, is literally the vibration of unconditional love. And so if your guides are making you do things or telling you to do things that make you feel unsafe or creep you out or are sexual in nature um, and, or disturb you in some way or make you feel uncomfortable in any way or unsafe in any way, it's likely not a spirit guide. I hate to burst your bubble. It's likely a lower vibrational being impersonating a guide who is trying to lead you down the wrong path and is getting you caught up, all caught up in, in doing things that are going to get you all out of whack. And we don't want that. We don't want that. So there are people who do entity clearing. I do do it for my private clients. It's not something that I personally offer as a service, but if you do need help with that, I can absolutely refer you either we can have a chat about whether it's something I can help you with or whether I can refer you to a trusted colleague of mine. So that's my, my spiel about entities. All right, the next major intuition blocker, <laughs> and a lot of people don't love this one either because it's not fun, is that if you are extremely disconnected from your body, it's going to be difficult to connect to your intuition. Your body is a portal. Your body is a temple for your intuition. And so if you are not taking care of yourself and your health, you are eating a ton of processed foods, you're not getting a lot of sleep, maybe you're really disconnected from your body because of trauma that you've been through in your life and you dissociate a lot and you don't like being in your body, you view your body as a burden in some capacity. It's also going to make it difficult for you to connect with your intuition because your intuition is going to work through your body. 
no matter you whether you are clairvoyant, clairaudient, claircognizant, there is some level of of sensation, of feeling, of energy that you feel and sense in your body when you are experiencing your other psychic and intuitive gifts. I know for me, when I get a clear audience download, I feel it in my body. When I am in a meditation, seeing and working with my guides, I'm also feeling the experience in my body. And it's taken me a lot of time and work and healing to feel comfortable in my body. And I can't claim that I'm 100% there. It's, that's, a, that's a big journey, and that's a journey that not a lot of people um, get to, right? Like being like wholly, fully, 100% in love with all aspects of your body. That's a beautiful journey for your life, right? But it, to at least get to a point where you feel safe in your body and you feel safe feeling... <laughs> Some people are so disconnected from their feelings and their emotions and they're scared of them that they push them away. That was me. I hated feeling anything for such a long time. I pushed that away, closed that door. Nope, don't want to look at that. And that can really block your intuition from coming in. So the more you're allowing yourself to feel, the more you're allowing yourself to be here in this vessel grounded have to be grounded for your intuition to come in, the easier it's going to be to connect with the spirit world, to receive intuitive insights from your higher self and your guides. Yes, there are spiritual healers out there that are airy fairy and floating and up in the sky energetically and they're not super grounded. And yes, they can receive intuitive insights, sure. But for the majority of us, And to really make sure that your intuition is clear, I'm not saying that those people are not clear channels. (laughs) My face may say something different. Um, But to really make sure that your intuition is coming through clearly and truthfully for you and your truth, you need to be grounded and in the body. So cultivating simple ways to ground yourself is going to be huge for you, especially if you have a lot of physical anxiety and medical anxiety. And learning how to cultivate safety in the body through simple ways, like taking, taking a pause throughout the course of your day to take deep breaths or becoming more aware of when you dissociate, meaning you leave your body, like when you're having a difficult conversation or you're doing something that you don't love doing or you're talking to someone about something that really brings up a trauma from your past. Now, dissociation is absolutely something you can work on with a trusted mental health coach or therapist or somebody like me who is an expert in doing trauma work with clients. Um, But just for the purpose of this video, it's important for you to know that the more you can be within your body and the more you can intentionally connect with your body, the more your intuition is going to come online. And one, one really great way to do that especially if you, have a tru- if you have trouble with your emotions and feeling your emotions, is to do EFT tapping. EFT, emotional freedom technique, tapping technique, is super simple and tr- frees and clears trapped emotions. There are a ton of EFT videos out there on YouTube. I don't make any myself as of this moment, but you can definitely search for some EFT videos and that will help you so much. So easy, so simple and will help you connect more with your body. Okay, so the more you connect with your body, the more your intuition is going to come online. And the final surprising, well, maybe not so surprising, this is the most, most, uh, the intuition block that will make the most sense to you, is, (laughs) and is trust issues. So my clients who have a lot of trust issues have trouble connecting to their intuition. Makes sense, right? If you have trouble trusting in other people to help you, support you, love you, it's very likely that you have a hard time trusting in yourself at a core. Maybe you're super independent because you don't trust other people, but likely underneath there is a layer of you not trusting in yourself. And the deeper level and layer to that is you are very, it's very unlikely that you're going to trust in the universe to have your back. 
that trust in source, that trust in the universe, is the ultimate. Once we heal that, oh my gosh, you become a manifestation. (laughs) You become a manifestation magnet when you trust in the universe to have your back. That's something I still continue to work on healing. It's a big one. And if you've been through trauma in your life, no matter what that is, and if you've been through trauma in your past lives, which we all have, it can make trusting in God and the universe to support you very difficult. Very, very difficult. Because how do you know that God is here trusting and supporting you if you can't see God? It's something that a lot of people struggle with. So cultivating a trust muscle with yourself and with the universe and with other people, trying the divine trinity of the three levels of trust is going to be massive for you with connecting to your intuition. So of the three, I would tune into which to you is your biggest block. Is it trusting other people? Is it trusting yourself? Is it trusting the universe? On a scale of one to 10, which is your your biggest block? And then I would do some some soul searching around what in your life has made you feel mistrustful, has made you feel like it's difficult to trust others. Was it a situation from your childhood, series of situations, a person in your life maybe? Or maybe you have trouble trusting in the universe specifically because of the religious background you've grew up, you've grown up in. Maybe you're afraid of being punished by God in some capacity. So these are all just a few things to take a look at when it comes to trust. And building a trust muscle with yourself and the guides will help you. So some ways that you can do that, asking your guides for a sign and then looking out for that sign will help you see, okay, I've got divine support. (laughs) This is is real. This is real. Seeing spirit in physical form, there is an experience, that is an experience unlike anything else and really helps to build that trust muscle. And then building trust in yourself, how about we make a low impact decision But that's one, but that is a decision that is being led by your intuition in some way, such as let's explore a new neighborhood in your hometown that you've never been to before, but you feel guided to go there. There is a coffee shop you've always wanted to visit there. So you go and whoa, you love this new section of of your hometown. You've never been here before. There's a cute little spiritual shop. What a surprise. So making low impact decisions, meaning decisions that are not going to have a massive impact on your life, like moving across country or switching career paths, making smaller decisions will really help build your trust muscle with yourself. And the more you consciously do that, the more you intuitively order from a new restaurant or you intuitively follow the way home without following your GPS and you prove yourself right, the more that's also going to build your own trust muscle with yourself and your intuition. So building that trust is key, and it is a process. It is not something that will happen overnight. None of this is going to happen overnight. The entity clearing, we can clear that overnight. (laughs) But healing some of the codependent dynamics that I was sharing at the beginning, and healing anywhere where your empathy is on overdrive, That will really impact your intuition. Connecting with your body and learning to be in your body and present in your body will really help your intuition. And learning and building that trust muscle is going to be huge. So those are four surprising blocks to your intuition. I hope you gained some clarity today around what may be going on for you behind the scenes. You may want to do some journaling around the area that really lit up for you the most to discover what could be going on there. Of course, I would love to support you in helping to discover where those blocks are coming from in a session with me or in a mentorship. So I will leave the link for booking a session with me below. And above all else, know that You are so divinely supported and guided, and you are so connected to source. 
already innately. That is your right as a human being. However, we need to peel back the layers to discover what is clogging up that connection and what is blocking that clarity from really coming through. I hope you enjoyed this video. Comment below what resonated with you. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.